that transition for many people that drink very heavily in college is not easy when they when they move to the real world and they go to Tyler for and Samantha I'm sure you guys can relate you start going to office parties and you can't yeah. binge drink there you know you're not gonna want to be standing there with your <laughs> boss completely blacked out no so how um, I mean I, how did you in your case Samantha how did you make that transition well um I think it, it ha I graduated in 2012 and so I guess I, I moved 2,500 miles back from college, back to New York, and so part of it was being completely um, like removed from the culture of it. Um, I have a lot of friends that stayed around their college friends and stayed in their college neighborhoods and areas and still play beer pong um, every weekend, <laughs> which I think is really interesting But because, you know, once you hit a certain age, once you're not like 20 anymore, that's it seems really silly and adolescent, but I guess... Uh, for me, it was just like a matter of like, this is, I have to pay my rent and I have to be responsible and I have to make sure that I am not hung over for work. So the most important thing is, is supporting myself and I can't support myself if I'm constantly drunk. <laughs> also in the real world, you're not going to hang out at local frat parties no. <laughs> or sort of, I mean, I, I hope you aren't. I mean, you could still be in New York and probably hang out with NYU students, but Tyler, isn't that a big part of it is, uh, you know, the... The uh, fraternity, the sorority, the parties they throw, and you're you're sitting there, and you have kegs everywhere, and there's just this pressure to be part of what's going on. Yeah, it's a uh, uh, FOMO, right? Fear of missing out. <laughs> it's it's if you're in these small towns, for the most part, the only thing going on are these parties. Um, so you want to be there, and you don't want to be standing there, um, you know, drinking a, a sprite or something. Uh, you want to be. Um, you want to be a part of it. You want to be acting goofy. You want to be entertaining just like everyone else. And that's the only way to get the attention of the uh, girl or guy that you have your eye on or whatever. Um, so, I mean, it, it's kind of a combination of everything we've talked about. It's just, I think, um, I agree with what the doctor said was that we, we need to understand that it's not going to go away no matter what we do. Um, so I think the best thing is to try to help students, um, you know, learn how to manage it responsibly, not being responsible alcoholics, but like, you know, now if I want a beer, I'm going to have a beer and watch TV. Well, because um, you're also it, educated, you know, I feel like right. after you've been drinking for a number of years, you kind of know what to expect. So right. how you know do, how do, then, then I think your Tyler, your point's right on, like how do college students, how are they better educated about drinking? Well, if, you know, you can do different kind of kinds of programs, especially during freshman orientation to help them learn um, how to know when, how to tell within yourself if you've never drank, you know, what to expect, um, that there's not going to, there's, because there's no warning label on the bottles to say, warning, the room is going to start spinning after four of these. Um, so, and then the colleges can do things that aren't necessarily endorsing alcohol, but like my university, I went to Iowa State University, they had these free, uh, we called it the drunk bus, but it was officially named like the Moonlight Shuttle, and it was just a a bus uh, system that went around town taking students to the areas where most of them lived off campus as well as the spots where they lived on campus so everyone could get home safely. So drinking and driving was basically not something that anyone did because it's like, why wouldn't you just take the free um, bus service and not pay? Is there any way to be social, Jordan, without drinking? I mean, you, like we were saying earlier, you go to a frat party, for example, you don't want to be in the quarter with a Sprite. Yeah, I mean, there's still ways of being social without drinking. I mean, there's always the, like, just coming up with excuses, like, oh, I have to get up early next morning, or, oh, I'm driving, and, like, people won't give you crap about it. But, you know, there's also so many different um, resources, especially on a college campus. Like, we, we also have a program called Kane's Night Live, which organizes these, like, nighttime events that don't involve drinking. And, I mean, it, A, it's a way to socialize and get to know people, but B, it's also like an outlet for people who don't necessarily feel comfortable going out and drinking and all that. But I mean, no one really gives anyone like any grief about not drinking.